All right, I want to, to now move uh, into a discussion on, on Islam. But before I do that, I want to say one more word about the Christian faith. Um, Islam speaks about the house of Islam, the Dar al-Islam, the house of Islam, which is founded upon um, 10 principles, 10 foundations, 10 pillars. So I'm going to talk about that today. But before I do that, I would like to just say a word about the house of God. Islam talks about the house of God, this house of Islam. Um, I want to just say a word about the house of God within a biblical understanding as a bit of a backdrop to our discussion then of Islam. And for that, I'm going to go to the last two chapters of the Bible that we've said occasionally in this class that within biblical faith, God is at work calling forth the people, leading them forward towards a grand conclusion when God's kingdom will be fulfilled forever and ever. The center of that plan, God is calling forth the people. And that people who are called forth and who are committed to him um, and serving him, are, we, we, we refer to them as the Church of Jesus Christ. This people who seek to be committed to Christ and to, his, uh, and to his call upon their lives form the church, which uh, the Bible would indicate God is using to carry forward his grand plan for history when Christ returns again and the kingdom is fulfilled. I find these last two chapters of the Bible quite helpful as I think about that because here in, Gen in Revelation chapter 21 and 22, we see a description of this grand city that comes from heaven. This grand city is called the Bride of Christ, which is another name for the church, it comes from heaven. In other words, the church is not a human creation. It is the creation of God. But the church cannot happen if people refuse to believe. The church happens where people believe, where people commit themselves to Christ. And so in the last two chapters of the Bible here, we see this description of this great city coming from heaven called the Bride of Christ, which means, uh, which means the church. Now this city that comes from heaven as we look there in Revelation 21, 22, it has 12 gates. And the 12 gates are the 12 tribes of Israel. What does that mean? And these gates are always open. What it means is you cannot understand the Christian faith and the role of Jesus within the Christian faith and the nature of the church without being in touch with Israel. The story of God working with Israel, which is described in the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible, is essential to understanding what the church is about. The church is in continuity with God's work among Israel. That doesn't mean they always got it right. Israel very, very often got it very wrong. But God was still at work forming a people preparing this people to take the good news of God's grand plan to all nations around the world. Uh, but you need to understand the 12 open gates, <laughs> which are the open gates representing Israel, is what we read here. That's one, one, one observation. When Christians talk about the city of God, its gates, which are open to all people, begins with Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We don't know that, except through God's revelation through Israel, through the people known as Israel. Um, that's the first observation. The second observation is that this city also has 12 um, foundation stones, beautiful foundation stones. And those 12 foundation stones are named here as the apostles. Who are the apostles? Jesus had around him apostles. When one of them betrayed him, they chose another one, namely Paul probably, or Matthias. Uh, Matthias, Paul, uh, you know. It, the idea is that there's 12, 12 apostles who are witnesses to what Jesus did and said. And so this apostolic witness is described within the New Testament part of the Bible. 
And so the foundation stones, the apostolic foundation stones of this city that God is building is the apostolic witness. Why 12? It's so important that God wanted us to be sure that we're getting it right. And so he chose these 12 apostles to be witnesses about his life and ministry. And we talked a bit ago about the resurrection of Jesus. We wouldn't know about that without the apostolic witness. Or we talked a bit about the crucifixion of Jesus. We would, no, we would not know about that without the apostolic witness. And so these, it's these two, Old Testament, Israel. We need that to understand what God's grand plan is. New Testament, uh, the apostolic witness. We need that, you see. And so it's both Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament preparing for the New Testament. And these two together, Israel, the apostolic witness, working together as witnesses and reporters and followers of God, provide the, uh, the context in which we can understand the nature of the church and its mission in the world. And in this passage in Revelation, we see that in the center of this city is the Lamb slain, which is to say, this city is formed by Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, slain for the sins of the world, but resurrected, Lamb slain, resurrected, is in the center of the city. And so the church around the world, as it gathers in hundreds of thousands of congregations every Sunday, always meets together celebrating Jesus Christ crucified and risen. He's always at the center. If he's not at the center, it ceased to be the church. So at the heart of this amazing community that God is building is Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And we read that the nations bring their wealth into this kingdom. And so it's not just a community off to the side, it's a community engaged with the nations, bearing witness to God's plan and inviting the nations to enter into this city and participate in God's grand plan. Um, and someday Christ is returning again. That's the promise Jesus made before he ascended into heaven. And Christians believe that in his second coming, the kingdom will be fulfilled and also judgment. Uh, he comes uh, to fulfill that kingdom and also to deal with the unjust and corrupt and wicked stuff in our world which does so much damaging. He will come as a righteous ruler when he returns again in fulfillment of God's grand plan for this kingdom. At the heart of it all is this church that he keeps forming from every tribe and language and nation. At Pentecost, every nation under heaven hears the gospel being preached. And so that continues to be the commitment of the church by uh, Bible translations and all that kind of thing making this gospel available for people all over the world to hear and to believe. That's, that's in summary, the, the, the heart of the Christian faith. And uh, this house of God that God is building as Christians understand it to be. Now I'm going to go in a rather radically different direction and we're going to talk about the house of God within the Islamic understanding. They call it the Dar al-Islam, meaning, or the Dar al-Salam, Dar al-Islam, the region under Muslim political and spiritual authority. That region, and how that region is formed, and what its mission is in the world, and so forth and so forth. But I wanted to just move into that, first of all, noting that within the church as well, uh, they refer to the uh, house of God. And it has these, these uh, 12, foundation stones and 12 gates, this city that, that, uh, that is described as the church. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.